Keturah and Lord Death, 2006, is a young adult novel by Canadian author Martine Levitt. Set in a mythic medieval past, it follows teenage Keturah as she persuades Lord Death to spare her life, on the condition that she finds her one true love. Critics praised Levitt's original personification of Death as a palpably sexual man, Publishers Weekly, who both repels and fascinates her protagonist. The novel opens with a prologue, in which a girl named Naomi begs Keturah for one of her stories. 16 year old Keturah spots a great heart and follows it into the forest. We learn that Keturah is an orphan. Raised by her grandmother, who talks often of her beloved late husband, Keturah dreams of finding her own one true love and starting a family. Before long, Keturah has lost the heart's trail and cannot find her way back to the path. She wanders in the forest for three days, unable to find food or water. Oh, and the third day, she encounters a goodly man, severe but beautiful, riding a black horse. He introduces himself. He is Lord Death, and he has come for Keturah. Keturah pleads with Lord Death. She is too young to die, and she has never known love. Death tells her that she thinks too highly of love, which is just a story spun out of dust and dreams. Nevertheless, he agrees to let her live if she is willing to pick another person from her village to die in her stead. Keturah refuses. Death tells her that she has been foolish, as most of her neighbors will die soon in any case, of the plague. To stall Lord Death, Keturah begins to tell a story. The reader recognizes it as her own story, the story of an orphan girl who longed to find love but was interrupted in her quest by death. In the middle of the story, Keturah stops and refuses to finish until the next night. Intrigued, or perhaps playing along, Death agrees to let Keturah live another day. What is more, if she finds her true love during that day, he will let her live. If she doesn't, she will die and become his own bride. Keturah is found in the morning by John Thamesland, the handsome son of the local baron. He carries her to her home in the village of Tide by Rood, on the far edge of the country of Angeland. While Keturah's grandmother and friends rejoice to have her home, the other villagers whisper that she is very touched. Keturah reveals to her best friends, Greta and Beatrice, what happened in the woods. Keturah does not hold out much hope of finding her true love in one day, and she wants to use her time to warn her neighbors of the coming plague. However, Greta and Beatrice spring into action to help Keturah find her true love and live. They draw up a short list of candidates, the choirmaster, the tailor, and farmer Ben Marshall. Meanwhile, Keturah goes to John Thamesland to warn him about the plague and persuade him to clean the village in the hope of preventing the catastrophe. Next, she goes to the village's witch, Zur Lily, to ask for a charm that might help her find her love. Zur Lily gives her an enchanted eyeball to carry in her apron pocket. If it stops moving while she looks at a man, that man is her true love. Zur Lily also gives Keturah some advice about Lord Death. One day you will understand, Keturah, that he infuses the very air we breathe with magic. Keturah's friends present her with their shortlist. Keturah casts her eye over each man, but her eyeball charm keeps twitching. She points out that the sweet natured choirmaster would be the perfect man for godly and musical Beatrice. Precise, competent Taylor, on the other hand, would be a good match for Greta. The eye slows down when Keturah looks at Ben Marshall, but it doesn't stop. Ben is bound by family tradition to marry the girl who wins the prize for best cook at the village fair. Oh, and Keturah's advice, John Thamesland leads the cleanup of the village. It becomes clear that he admires Keturah, even loves her. But his aristocratic station makes it impossible for Keturah to look him in the eye. After her encounter with him, Keturah finds that the eye charm is weeping. Keturah realizes that since her return from the forest, her feelings have been deepened and quickened by the proximity of death. She could not love anyone as deeply as she loves each and every villager on this day, knowing that it is likely to be her last. She keeps her appointment with Lord Death. He asks her if she has found her true love. She reveals that her true love is death. When he stands close to you, your life becomes a song, a praise. She agrees to marry Lord Death and give up her mortal body on condition that he spare the village from a plague. Death agrees. Related summaries, books by Martine Levitme, Book of Life by Angel. I hope you enjoy this video. Leave a like if you didn't. Be sure to subscribe for more lore. Thank you all so much for your support.